understood that, so you should say yeah. that again so I remember. The gold <laughs> so, zero might be out. Yeah, if for some reason your 120 volts don't work, it's most likely your goal is zero or you flip the GFCI. So there's the reset button. It's just like in a house, so you can test it and reset it. The green light means that's on. Um, so the goal is zero, you can turn on and off the DC or the AC power system. So you could turn off. I say normally just leave everything on. It doesn't seem to really waste a lot of battery, but as you use the van, you'll be able to tell kind of what your power usage looks like to see if that's a concern or not. So, so once we drive the car, it re-energizes Yeah, it will put in about 600 to 900 watts an hour, and you have a 3,000 watt system. So if you drove for three and a half hours, it would basically fill it from empty, okay? So, um, and then you're also gonna be getting solar. Now, from a solar perspective, we were testing your solar like pretty heavily the last couple of days. And I feel like your roof rack that's over here, it's blocking mm -hmm. part of this panel, which is really impacting. Cause I was like, I feel like you should be getting a lot more than you were getting. Cause mm -hmm. you have 200 Watts. You're typically getting like 60 to 70 Watts. And I'm like, I feel like one of the panels isn't on. Okay. So then we went and we tested everything. We ripped everything apart, tested it again. I'm like, no, it's getting stuff. And I'm like, well, what's happening is it's partially blocked, which is then limiting the total input that's so coming in. Is the roof meant to have like a, a tully on there or something? So like that, that little thing that he has up there, whatever, his little cargo carrier or whatever yeah. from before, it's just blocking. Like that could come off and you could okay. put on a normal roof rack. Like if you guys want to make a improvement in the future, like, uh, hey, Jason, can you put on your normal roof rack as an example of normal solar panels, then we would be able to get it much better okay. out of it. So, uh, so here in the box you have on this side, you have all of your AC breakers, okay? So these should not flip, and they're all labeled what they are, okay? And then over here, these are all your DC breakers. If a DC uh, fuse blows, it'll have a little red light next to it, okay? So if that ever happens for whatever reason, just call me, and you can pick up fuses at like AutoZone or you get them on Amazon, they're really cheap. But we wanna make sure that we kind of fuse everything properly. So we don't want to throw like a huge fuse in if it's blowing something like say for instance your lights it starts blowing it i say okay pull the fuse what is it and you're like oh it's a seven amp and i'm like okay you can go ahead and replace it with a 10 let's see if that's fine because i know the wire is rated for up to 15 amps okay. so i know we're good there um but everything should be fused pretty properly here so you shouldn't have anything blow out okay there's basically one that goes to this guy here. So there's one like 60 amp fuse that comes to this. This is your Garmin power switch. So this will turn on and turn off your lights if you come in. And then these That's other- That's the one that you said if we, if the Apple, if the iPod was out, the iPod, then we can just lift it and do it manually. That's yeah, the same thing. exactly, okay. exactly. So I just turn on your water pump. That's what you just heard. Okay. So it's best practice to leave your water pump off unless if you're using water. And the reason being is if you get a leak in your system, then the water pump is just going to just put, you know, you have 25 gallons of water. If there's a leak in there, it'll take all 25 gallons and just put it all on the floor. So, okay. you know, we test out everything. Obviously, there's no leaks or anything like that. It's a pressurized system, but things happen. So... I normally just say to keep that off is the safest thing. You can throw that on the bench there if you want. Uh, and then you have your tank warmers. So your tank warmer, you have one tank warmer because you only have one gray tank. Um, what the tank warmer will do is if it's freezing out and you're like, say you're camping during the winter, you have the heat on, which I'll show you guys how to use the heat and stuff. You have the heat on, everything's warm on the inside. If you have a, your gray tank, what I normally recommend is if it's freezing, you just open it and leave it open and then it will just drain if you use it. But you might be like in a national park where you're not allowed to do that. So if that's the case and it's gonna freeze at night, you can go ahead and turn on the tank warmer. The thing is the tank warmer takes about 10 amps an hour. So it's kind of power intensive, but it will stop the tank from freezing or it should stop it from freezing. Okay. But normally I recommend if you're camping in winter position, I'll show you guys how to drain the, the gray water tank. I normally recommend just leave it open and then you're just dump on the ground unless if you're in an area that is not permitted, okay? Mm -hmm. It's always best to check with your local authority wherever you're at to see what their gray water stipulation is. Like, I can't believe it's allowed to be done here. So they just let it let Yeah, it, it just depends. Like if I have somebody staying at my house, as an example, I say just leave them open. It's fine. Mm -hmm. Just dump on the ground. It's just water. It's like fresh water. It's yeah. not a big deal. I mean, if it was black water, you're a shit. No, yeah. Like, yeah, I don't want that on my property. <laughs> but dishwater, I don't care, yeah. you know? 
Um, so your tank warmers also like yesterday, my son was like, I uh, tank warmers, I'm testing them. They're not coming on. I'm like, yeah, they're not coming on. I say it's 80 degrees out. So there's a thermostat on them. Oh, okay. So it's really hard for us to test them during the summer. So we have to basically just test the electric to make sure that the pulse is going to it, but then it has a, a separate uh, thermostat on it. So it will turn on if it's below uh, 60 degrees, if you turn it on. Um, and then as soon as it gets to 60 degrees, it'll shut off. Okay. okay. So if at night, as an example, you're camping somewhere like in a desert where at night it gets cold, yeah. but during the day it's really hot, you could probably just leave it on. And then in the day, as soon as it gets above 60, even if it's on, it will turn off. So, okay. and then at night it would turn back on again when it got below 60. So, okay. okay. Um, so those are basically all you have. You have your water pump, which you can control on here on your Garmin. You have your lights, your two zones for your lights, dinette and then front. Your one door light that's right there uh, switched from the outside, mm -hmm. okay? Um, then you have for your hot water, you have the separate hot water system, which is the Bosch hot water system. So to turn that on, you go to the Gouve or Gouve app and then you just turn it on. Just remember to turn it off. So what I would do is turn it on for 20 minutes, okay? Let it warm up and then Go ahead and shut it off before you use the water then it's off and you have four gallons of hot water at that point to use okay is that about what a shower is yeah i mean yeah. actually for with the outdoor shower it's probably less you know okay. because you're just going to spray yourself and get yourself because it's not constantly on it's a sprayer yeah. so you're going to spray it get yourself wet and wash yourself then spray and wash yourself off you probably use a gallon so okay okay so yeah and i'll show you guys how to use that um Everything's and then labeled once, here. So. Once you've closed that circuit panel, then you can actually store things yep, in there, right? Yep, you can store things in here. So this is advantage. Like, we have the more expensive panel, but it doesn't have the cover on it. So we actually switched back to this one because I was having problems with people that they'd store stuff in here and it hit the panel and it has breakers and they just flip because oh. they're magnetic. They just flip really easily. So this one's actually a little bit nicer from that. We like respect you can throw whatever in here you don't have to worry about like oh. knocking it so and then underneath here you'll see uh this is where you have like your plumbing and your wiring and stuff like that so we do everything underneath unlike the last guy that had a shit running everywhere all of our wires are very tidy and they're going exactly where we want them underneath the cabinets so so it's really easy if we needed to add like a an outlet in this cabinet or whatever we can do that by just pulling wire underneath so and then all of these things you'll notice just the little details like we put a rubber gasket on this so it doesn't make noise when you're going down the road so that's really nice and the same thing is over here but it doesn't have that power switch or this it's just an empty cubby and it has the false floor in it as well so if you guys wanted to hide something you could lift the false floor and put it oh, underneath yeah. there also this right here this is this floor comes up when it lifts up, you can see the water tank, so you can see the level of the water, yeah. so you can kind of get an idea. But also, that might be a good place you could throw like a wallet or something. Nobody would ever think to look underneath the floor here. Okay. So, yeah, let me show you that real quick. These things, when you close you them, when you come up to it, it'll be off. You hit the center button, it'll turn on like this. So there is, uh, I'll send you guys manual. There's a bazillion settings you can put on a schedule and all sorts of crap like that, okay. which I normally don't recommend doing. I normally just turn it on when you need it. So right here. The center one with the squiggly lines is heat. This is fan. And then there's settings to the left of that. So, and this is the calendar to do like a, like a schedule and stuff. I've never played with those functions. Okay. <laughs> so I normally just come to the heater and then you just press the button and then you set it to whatever temperature you want. So you can go around and just say like 86 and then you can set for the duration. So right now by default it's 30 minutes, you can go down and you can go up. So if you want to run just indefinitely, you just rotate this around and then eventually you'll get to, I should be wearing my glasses. You'll get to uh, an infinity sign. Okay. And then if I hit that, then that's gonna just run it at 86 forever, okay? And you'll hear it start up here in a second. So we'll get it to run so you guys can feel the heat coming okay. up. Okay. Now I realize it's summertime, so you're probably not going to use the heater. But what it's important to do is once a month run the heater for a half an hour. Okay? okay. So as an example, you don't have any animals in here. You go to an art festival and you're like, okay, we're gonna walk around for a couple hours. We'll just turn on the heater for 30 minutes. 
let it run for 30 minutes. You can have your windows open or leave it closed. It doesn't really matter. Just go out, let it run for a half an hour and it'll shut itself off. So there is a line that goes from the heater to the diesel tank. So it'll need to, to clear out essentially. Okay. So it'll get stale in there. So if you run it, it'll go ahead and just keep So doing. when that's running, it's coming off of our gas tank. Yep. So we don't have to worry about the solar or nope. the battery. Right. It, it okay. does run off the battery as well. So it okay. runs off the goal zero, not off your battery up here. Okay. okay. So we wire all that to come off the goal zero okay. so that it will last without stressing your normal battery. As I learned one of our first builds, we had put in a heater, we actually had a vendor that did our heater installs then, and they hooked it up directly to the battery. And she was out the first night oh, and she no. said, well, my heater stopped at four in the morning. It's because the heater looks for a voltage. If that voltage mm -hmm. isn't there, then it won't run. So. Oh, but then her car was dead, I'm guessing. Uh, no, because oh. it, it'll kick off so it won't kill the battery. Oh. So yeah, I told her, I said, just start the van, let it run for yeah. 20 minutes and then you'll be fine for And then I came and re-ran a wire. Oh because the vendor had just did that. Cause that's what they do in semi trucks. They don't do it like that. Oh. So. Pretty easy. So this light will turn off after a while, but you just click it, click again, click again, and then off, click again. It was like literally just click, 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 click. And then you let it wind down. So you'll hear it wind down and then it's gonna burn whatever fuel's left yeah. in the unit. So yeah. The diesel is like so <laughs> Okay. All right, so we're under the passenger side. This is your muffler for your heater. This will get hot, okay? <laughs> so don't touch this if it's hot. Um, this right here, this is your gray water dump. So if it's perpendicular like this, that means it's closed. If it's in line, that means it's open. Okay, so you can see we're testing. So I'll just leave it open, we'll let it drain out, okay? And there's no way to be able to tell if it's full. The only way that you can tell if it's full is once the water gets full, you actually hear it start trickling on the ground because there's an overflow on the top. So if you hear water trickling outside, even though it's closed, that means that your water tank is full. Okay. So obviously they were testing quite a bit. Oh, there's your goal zero in, in the battery right there. So let's uh, turn that off. <laughs> your hot water tank is here, okay? So you can access it here, but the actual control is you have to open the side door and it's set on ideal, which is going to give you the best hot water for energy use. But if you want it hotter, which I can't imagine you would because you don't have like a regular shower, right. you can actually turn it hotter. It'll just use more power. You can also, if you find that the temperature's too hot, you can turn it down and it'll use less power. Okay. okay? It just changes the You don't know what it is, the number? Like, I don't know the like exact degrees. No, I don't know off the top of my head. Okay. So. But, and it's a dial, so it'd be kind of, it wouldn't be precise, yeah. but it'd be like about, you know? <laughs> but um, that's one way you can do that, okay? Um, inside of the cabinet, there's shutoffs. There's like a main shutoff you can see in the very back. It has, it's a little pex fitting in the back. So that's your main water shutoff if, you ever, mm -hmm. if we ever need to service uh, the system. The other thing is on the top, So everything breaks down so you can get access to it. So there, this is your water pump. This is your accumulator tank, which creates pressure. Okay, so so you don't have water going, puff, 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 puff. you get a steady stream. That's because of this. What we've seen from a maintenance perspective is sometimes the water pump will be on and no water will be coming out. So you check your tank first, make sure, oh, I have water in my tank. If that's the case, this little guy right here comes off and it's like a bike pump. So you put a bike pump on, give it a few pumps and it will pressurize the system and then your water will start to flow again. Hmm. Okay. So it's just a little maintenance thing. If I have a bike pump that tells me the pressure, uh, normally 40 pounds, we'll go ahead and, and get it going. Otherwise, if you don't have one, you just plug it in and just pump it a few times and then turn back on the water pump and it should end up uh, getting water out there. So that's just a little thing that I've seen on lately. I never saw that for years. And then all of a sudden, like the last three months, every single one we've installed, it's like they changed the manufacturing process on them or something. So we've had to put some pressure into them. Then your main water shelf's there, but it's about it, it's pretty simple. And then your water fill. Your water fill will be on this side. And on your key ring, 
there's a key, there's two keys on your key ring. Put the key in, you turn the key, it turns this. Pop it off, put water in when you're done. Just put it back on, turn it, take the key out. There you go. And you okay. installed that, right? Yep, okay. we installed this. Mm -hmm. All righty. Yep. Now, the one thing where you're gonna notice is your paint back here is gonna get all fucked up from your doors. Okay, so these doors, it's old. This system's different okay. than a new system. So these are hitting here. Okay. So there's not much we can do about it. Just like here, normally in our normal builds, these go all the way down, but because of the design of the older van and the, the hardware for the door, we couldn't get these to go all the way down. So we had to stop them here. Okay. But, and then you can see some of his wiring still here. This was from the trailer hitch. Okay. So we don't know if it's still alive, but we didn't mess <laughs> with it. Okay. So I assume it's still good, but I, I'm not positive. So, mm -hmm. yeah. If you were going to tow something. It's hard to look at dash. stuff at the end of the day and go, I, it probably would have been better to get a brand new one, but it's like neither here nor there now. Yeah. I mean, this is a beautiful van. Yeah. You will get lots of use out of it. It lets you get started without having a $160,000 commitment. Yeah. And, you know, I mean, you guys are still not into it for a couple bucks. It's still expensive, but it's a beautiful build. It's really, I mean, it's got great components in it. It should last a long time. So mm -hmm. it's something, again, that you can pass down to the kids or let them use it. That's you know, what when I'm you guys thinking. upgrade yeah. at some point in the future, but. And then when you guys are ready to upgrade at some point in the future, like we'll have three or four different designs at that point, different price points. So we're really trying to diversify our offering. And you'll know so. like at that point, I feel like. Um, and it tells you your output is 68 watts. So this is what it's using right now for all your, um, basically your lights and anything that's running. So right here above, I can hit this and it will just change what, so it's at 12.3 volts right now. 5.1 amps is what it's using, okay? And then how many watts? 69. So, so that's just changing the display. Yeah, this changes the display. And then over here, you can change, that one doesn't do it. This one you can hit where it says light, and it'll shut that off. It says uh, it's 32.3 hours to empty right now, like with everything that's running. Okay. And then after driving for three hours and a half, it should be full again. Yeah, like when you guys get home like yeah, yeah. It'll, it'll, it should stay pretty much here the thing is uh like again your solar you're only going to be getting maybe 100 watts even though you have 200 watts because this one's so yeah. bro it's like so covered uh and i'll go up there and show you guys that too um but you'll see up here it says this one has a little ac and there's a little light this controls turning on and turning off your ac power so if i turn this off that would turn off your outlet and your back splash is now not working Okay. Oh, right here. Right here. That, yep. That black Any, up anyone, there. even this one right here, this is an on now. Okay. Oh, okay. So if I do that, I hit the little button. They'll is turn that, that like back an on. emergency thing? So I'm not draining by accident. Yeah. It's just more or less like if you're not using the van. So the best thing is like, say for instance, you guys are going to do this trip this weekend, right? Mm -hmm. You get home and you're going to use the van for six weeks. If that's the case, as soon as you get home, I would, I would turn everything off because it'll be hundred percent full probably okay. when you're there. I would turn everything off. So the 12 volt systems here, and then the uh, 120 volt systems there, and then I just hit the light, and most likely by the time you come back out, it's gonna be at 95 to 100%. Okay. Okay, ready to go next time. So then I just do this, do this, and it's gonna turn everything back on, but your lights aren't gonna come back on automatically because they go through the Grumman, or the okay. Grumman switch. Oh, okay. So then we have to just go turn them on either with the tablet or, or there. And then so. I see that it jumps up. Is that a reliable 99.9? .9? Uh, yeah, I mean, it's only it's at 11. On yeah, it's only 11 watts right now because nothing's on except yeah. your refrigerator, so. Yeah, and your refrigerator will cycle. And if you find like that, your refrigerator is a little bit older. It's probably not the most efficient. Okay. So if you find like, oh, like this refrigerator is not great, let me know. I have a new vendor that we're working with that's really, really great. And they have a great chest refrigerator in multiple sizes. So okay. we can order you a new one if you want. And I can have it sent directly to your house. And it just pops in and plugs in the same way. So okay. easy. So, so that when that time the, comes. The railing. The, the shelf, the like shelf. For there. yep. And if you want, the again, I can wrong. order that for you guys and have it sent to you. It's really easy to install. We just have to make sure it fits in the size. Is yeah, that I just said? have to see okay. if it fits in 17. So, come. Okay. Oh, it's not hard so to put it. in, you're saying? No, it's okay. really easy. Yeah. And so that's it. There's nothing really else to the. Yeah, outside of that, it's like you can attach the app. So, why don't you open up the app? And I'll show you how to do that. 
I'm so happy we got the better. I need to get off. Yes, is you just that thing comes off the wall. There's a little plastic piece that it just snaps into. Either, so you can pull it off and it has the serial number and everything on the okay. back that you'll need to register it. Oh, okay. so we have to do that? It's yeah. It's not like you're going to give it to And then you'll be able to boost your AT&T signal with that. And then you can we do that through. and then right now just so that I can do it? You can only charge with either shore power connected or solar. You can't have solar and shore power. And it doesn't make any sense anyways. If you had shore power, you're gonna get way more power mm -hmm. than you would from solar. So basically you have to flip these little guys here. So this one right here, this is your shore power. The one that looks like red and black, this one is your solar. So what you do is the red goes on the bottom and it just rocks into place and then you'll get a blue light when you know it's connected. So that's the way I'm gonna leave it right now because we're gonna disconnect your shore power, okay? And then if you get to a place where you can plug in, the only time I would plug in is if you're low, right? Like you need to go ahead and charge it up. Most of the time, you should be good just plugged in like this. But if you're gonna go away for a trip, as an example, you only have an hour drive to where you're going, you're at 15% battery, plug it in the night before, charge it up to 100%, then swap it back to solar and then you'll be good to go, okay? As far as shore power is concerned, on the outside here, you have a shore power 30 amp inlet here. Okay. So this is a pigtail adapter you can get on Amazon. Okay. They're like $25. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then you can use a normal extension cord. Or if you go to a campground where they have a plug-in like this, you can just grab it and put it in. Okay. So that's it. So we have to get this from Amazon? Yeah.